and the department is like the water resource uh, development and management i work there so now going into the presentation is it working this uh, this is there no this one is no 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 you have to plug in right no that uh, the dongle is not plugged in we need to share the screen also dr mohana first and also if request dr kashi to stand in front of camera okay here yeah. okay Ah uh, yeah. So I think you. Uh, I think you have to click it first, then only you can control. Now, 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 now you can control. Ah uh, yeah, now is it is working. Okay. So why we need to analyze the stochasticity? In a way, like uh, if we include the stochasticity, if we could uh, model the stochasticity in the in our model. Uh, we work on different models. Uh, I hope, like you also, may be working in different types of modeling. And most of the time, like uh, we ignore the stochasticity because if the model itself high complex means it sometimes like uh, it takes a huge amount of the computation and also like uh, a lot more mathematics behind that. So most of the time we assume and we also wanted to make our model uh, to be uh, simpler in terms of when you calibrate it when you Uh, simulate the model, but like uh, considering the stochasticity is very important, especially for uh, hydrological problem because we all know that the hydrology is like highly uh, stochastic uh, in nature. Several processes that controls uh, the behavior of the system. You take any model, like it could be a runoff model, it could be a surface runoff, groundwater. Or any uh, processes you want to see that a lot of different. Uh, Uh, variables uh, a large number of uh, sometimes the model parameters that controls the whole process so when we want to make it like a, a complete deterministic sometimes the model may be good for the scenario which you are simulating but the model may not give the expected results if something goes in a different way or like if the condition changes it could be like uh, any of the different conditions could be like the process itself or like what boundary conditions we assume many things are there so in that way like uh, the quantification of uncertainty or analyzing the stochasticity is very important in uh, in in our model it, at any extent like uh, if you bring that that will be good like what level of uh, whole the uncertainty analysis we want to do that it depends on again like uh, how well your model is itself like is able to uh, behave or like how it captures sometimes like if model is too complex it may not uh, uh, give a proper results also so in those conditions like we may go with some assumption we may fix some value so like that we do but like the quantification of uncertainty gives a more uh, uh, reliability like you can believe your results because you are not just depending on just one value rather the whole simulation will give a probability distribution from the whole distribution you can select the best value out of it in under what scenario what circumstance your decision making which you are going to take sometimes like the decision making when i say that some decision making may be like you need a very accurate results especially when you are going with a very short time and you have to take a decision for any flood forecasting so your value should be very accurate so you go with a higher level of the confidence in some cases the data itself may be having like lot of uncertainty the process itself like uh, uh, going with a very large scale when you analyze it's very difficult to maintain that so in that time like even the solution is not so accurate but still that is that will not change much of our uh, uh, the whole uh, decision making so the sources of uncertainty uh, comes from various sources majorly like from the nature itself like the uncertainty is there on top of that there is a model uncertainty so in the whole process like uh, we will be going to see how the uncertainty is coming into the picture and how we can 
quantify them in terms of treating them individually and then combinedly. So here, when we talk about the hydrological model, the major sources of uncertainty comes from the input model parameter and then model structure, what kind of structure. So here, like all these three things, like individually, I will show some of the work like which we have done and then combine together how that affected the decision making so that we demonstrated through linking this uh, machine learning model with a process model like we use some agricultural management side how that works so as i mentioned like the decisions uh, can be of various different things but majorly in water resource when we talk about uh, it could be for the flood control hydropower operation irrigation scheduling so how this quantification of uncertainty helps them to come up with a more better uh, reliable uh, values. So here, like I have chosen the uh, ANN model uh, because the artificial neural network model is, uh, have been uh, well used in, in the hydrological community. And many a times the model results are reported to be uh, producing more accuracy than the physics-based model. But still like the core hydrologist or any uh, hydrological community, is not still uh, ready to accept the complete uh, form of the machine learning models because the machine learning model, as I mentioned, it has its own uh, limitations, mainly that that doesn't capture the physics of the system. It does, it just uh, deal with the data. So whatever the data you give, it will go any type of data. It doesn't have to be a kind of uh, the complete, the entire data set you need, whatever the, suppose you want to simulate the stream flow, with the whatever like uh, the previous stream flow data you have, you can make it like a kind of recursive, auto recursive process, and then you can just forecast it. So only with the stream flow, you can just forecast the stream flow. But whereas if you want to apply any conceptual or physics based model, you need a lot of data, like uh, you need a uh, uh, land use land cover, like this soil data. And we also need uh, temperature and precipitation and many data we need. So that is where like it has its own advantage. But uh, the acceptance we thought like can be still much more better when we truly understand where this model behaves well, where the model is not behaving well. So that is one of the motivation to quantify the uncertainty. So here, uh, as I mentioned, like uh, this ANN model, especially people criticize this ANN model apart from this uh, data oriented things, it lacks the transparency because like when you change the different data, the whole thing actually changes. And it doesn't produce the identical results when you want to reproduce it or uh, the results you want to make it more generalizable form. And also it requires uh, these, these things like uh, people also mentioned that requires uh, uh, research to significantly improve that. So what are the difficulties like quantifying the uncertainty? The model itself like coming from the uh, neural network computing architecture, it goes with a huge number of the parameters and then uh, the computation and different uh, non-linear mathematical functions, we include that. So anything you want to plug in that, uh, either the uncertainty method, if you see, it can broadly vary in any of these types, majorly. It can come from the analytical method, approximate method, Bayesian and uh, fuzzy theory method. But like direct application is possible or do we need to change anything to incorporate uh, these techniques into the ANN model is what we wanted to see initially. So in that way, like uh, we found that the methods itself having the different kinds of the restriction and some advantages and the limitations when we say like some methods are really expensive computationally and requires the derivative information and sometimes you got to assume the probability distribution. So here, as I mentioned, the objective is to individually quantify the parameter input and structure or like combine them together to quantify the predictive uncertainty at the model output level and then use them for the decision making. So I use the different data sets mainly just because these are all the methodological development, not really focused on the problem based where this catchment is having this problem. So we wanted to solve not like that. We just wanted to see like how these methods are working. So methodological development. So some data set or something is not really available in all the watershed. So we also wanted to see at different time scale how this behavior is. So we chose the different uh, uh, river uh, watershed, uh, the Kolar Basin from India and Leaf River Basin from uh, USA. So this is the overall nomenclature like we use so that like you can understand how these parameters are coming up because 
these parameters as i mentioned doesn't have any physical sense only this connection actually you can relate it how much that the weights having the strength uh, how much like less strength the weight is having so in that way like uh, we have you can just uh, look at this way like i is denoting the input and h is the hidden node and o is the output node so w indicates the weights which is connecting the first input to the first hidden and this is a hidden node to output so w h1 is like hidden to the output so h o i h so these are all the different notations are uh, used in the model so this paper is published in uh, journal of hydrology this work so what we did for quantifying the uh, the prediction uh, parameter uncertainty here is like uh, we did a two stage optimization generally like uh, these models are optimized just with only this first stage people use the mean square error or people use the nash cliff efficiency so whatever the objective function you bring that so the main objective is to minimize the error between the model prediction and the model observation we do that but in that uh, in this process what we did we just went ahead and we did the two stage optimization so in the stage two optimization as if like to minimize the error we use the mean square error here we wanted to see how best we can minimize the uncertainty so that this model actually coming up with the best set of the simulation so here we use the percentage of coverage average width and mean square error of the simulation so what we did is like just uh, because like one set of the simulation we did a uh, uh, thousands of different random sets we created uh, by perturbing the weights and then these perturbation of weights will give to the different uh, set of the simulation so all these simulations how they go and then uh, match with the uh, observed value so not just the one simulation we did like a kind of the ensemble of simulation so here the poc is like uh, the the point which is falling within the band so when, once you have the ensemble of simulation you can just define what is the upper bound and lower bound so within that bound how best your observed values are falling within that suppose if the observed values are falling then the c is counted as one if it is not then zero so that is the logic in the poc suppose for example if you have 100 uh, observation points out of the 100 observation point if 95 points are falling within the simulation band then the poc gets 95 percentage and here the average with this how close because just to keep your observed points within the simulation it cannot be like kind of the whatever the wider band you want the band also should be narrow as much as possible then only you can really rely on how overall this ANN model is behaving so here we chose the average width so average width is the, just the difference between the upper bound and lower bound so here this is a purely like a multi objective optimization you can see the poc should be maximized as much as point we want should fall within the prediction interval where the average width should be minimal as much as so mean square error also we use because the ensemble of the mean because most of all these things we take the mean as a decision variable you choose you actually simulate any number of variable 100 1000 whatever it is but the when we take the decision mostly like people prefer to use the mean value so here we use the ensemble of mean so this k is actually the number of ensembles so in that way like this objective function is formulated so these two are minimization function this is a maximization function so this we did in a multi objective optimization so in the stage one as you as i mentioned like it doesn't give any information about the uncertainty it is purely a deterministic model just you will get the point estimation whereas in the stage two as i mentioned like we used all these things so finally if you see these are all the different parameters let's say like it has a parameter one to parameter n so how best you are actually perturbing these parameters so this perturbation is what we did so how we did is like the initially we defined uh, some amount of the per perturbation we tried the different levels of the perturbation like suppose you have a weight value 10 so this 10 we applied like a 10 percentage 20 percentage 30 percent like that we increase the different amounts of the per uh, perturbation and then we wanted to see like how best this prediction interval is coming up so here uh, uh, this result shows that first stage optimization as you can see like uh, the model is calibrated well both uh, in calibration and validation these are all the different indices and then uh, this is a, a first stage how the prediction uncertainty is coming even in the first stage itself like uh, 
we found that a uh, different range of the parameter is contributing to the different RMSC value. So as you can see, some of the parameters are uh, highly insensitive. So here you can see like uh, uh, these parameters like where ranges from the minus 10 to plus 10, it has like a, a huge variation in the RMSC. And some parameters is like almost close to zero. It doesn't have any much sensitivity. So then like we did the second stage of optimization. In the second stage optimization, what we did is like we selected various different combination of the perturbation level. And then each point is representing one set of perturbation. That perturbation will control the whole model parameters. So as you can see, like we, we got an ensemble of the different range of the model simulation. So here the subjectivity comes like what you want to take ultimately. So to demonstrate each point, because each point is giving the amount of the perturbation. So we chose the three different representative point. One is on the very low average width. One is on the very high average width. And one is like the parrot of friend, uh, the, the converging point, the edge of the parrot of friend we just selected. So because of the selection of three different points, you can see like the point one is having the very less average width and point three is having a very. So because of the less average width, the POC is also going very, very less because your average width is very less. So here, because of the high average width, the POC is also going very high. So we want, we just chose the between uh, these two things. Generally in any ideological problem, we chose, we prefer to choose 95 percentage prediction interval. So our uh, here, like our selection, we ended to select the 95 percentage. So accordingly, how the model is behaving, uh, that is what we wanted to see that. So here it is like, if you see, this is a final uh, hydrograph, simulated hydrograph. So you can see like there is a, a ensemble of simulation, which range something like a 2052, like something like a, a 1850. So this is a, a peak value simulation. Similarly, for the low, medium, all this simulation is having the the different ranges. So this one we plotted in the form of the histogram. So this is observed peak. So this is just for the peak. It has like we, we chose 100 number of ensembles. So this is 100 simulation which goes uh, from the various different ranges from the roughly around uh, 1850 to 2100. So this is a simulation for the peak. And this we did for the higher lead forecast because uh, one hour forecast may not be much useful. At least you need six hour, 12 hour forecast. And we did our simulation till uh, fifth hour because beyond that we complete, we go like the model simulations where model forecast accuracies were dropping much. So we just did. So here you can see like because of the increase in the lead time, there is a increase in the level of uncertainty. That is why this... Uh, this is a one hour, three, and then five hour. You can see like one hour is like very close. The Pareto friend uh, that uh, the convergence we got, whereas for the higher time, it was actually going away. So this is like uh, the calibration and validation results for the uh, one hour, three hour. As you can see that like the RMS is going very high because that error was very high. Similarly, for uncertainty also, like we saw the average width were increasing for the selection of the 95 percentage that POC. So you can very clearly see one hour there is average width is very less because obviously that when we are increasing our lead time, when you want to forecast it for the higher lead time, the model error will increase and that will, of course, will increase the amount of uncertainty as well. So that was very evident from our model simulation not just the model error, it increases the uncertainty as well. So this one, like we did a comparison with the different standard uh, approaches like bootstrap, Bayesian and first order. And we found that the prediction interval, the proposed method is uh, better. And this is actually the uh, comparison of the different method. And we, we got like good results in the prediction uncertainty interval. So this plot shows the comparison. These are all some existing methods which were already uh, reported in the ANN modeling framework. And then this is a comparison of the peak and most of the existing methods were not able to capture the uncertainty, even then the stochasticity was brought into the modeling. But like in this model, we found that uh, the stochasticity is well modeled with this prediction interval method. So going into the structure uncertainty. So now we saw the parameter uncertainty. Structure uncertainty is like what we did. So ANN as a connection, we know that. So here what we did in our model, we put off this connection. That means like there won't be any connection in that. So here in that way, we wanted to see how the model was performing. So randomly just we uh, put off this connection. 
like one connection or two, three, four, like that different various combinations. And we also made sure that at least one connection is ensured. If you are completely removing, then this contribution comes from this input will be completely lost. In that way, we maintained our uh, simulation. Uh, so this equation, you can see this LJ and LIJ are the, uh, the controlling uh, parameters. In that, like if the values become zero, then there won't be any effect. So that connection is completely uh, shut off, shut down that. So if it is one, then that connection is having the uh, holding the value and that connection strength will be there. So this controls the, uh, the whole uh, parallel computing ar architecture. In that way, like we developed a relative performance index. So if that particular connection is existing, what is the model performance? And if that is not existing, what is the model performance? So this is how we wanted to see that. But interestingly, like we saw that like uh, the percentage that model performance going and increasing is almost very similar as you can see from the pie diagram. So that means like uh, uh, if you are actually removing even the connection strength, what we found is like the variation which is coming in the model performance is not so much. Uh, there is a variation, but not significantly. Uh, with respect to the hidden and the input node and finally our results also we found like reasonably good that means like we found uh, the ANN is having a, a large pool of the different sets of the parameter even if like one connection is you are just removing it it will be balanced it will be compensated by the other set of the weights so, so in that way like we could not much find much of the uncertainty which comes from the structure uncertainty because the model itself like very robust it is a parallel computing architecture so the entire information when we, it is communicated parallelly in the whole system and then the computation actually simulating with the response surface which we are want to simulate it so we could not find much variation in that so going into the input uncertainty so here what we did is like uh, we wanted to randomly introduce the error into the observed value because in the observed value uh, we just believe that which is coming from the any rain gauge station or any discharge station we believe that the instrument is correct and then we just take that value and then we go for the modeling but then there is obvious that the instrument may be wrong sometimes the human error sometimes any systematic error other than that could happen so this will so true value nobody knows so there are three things like true value observed value and what is the modeled value so here is like we believe the observed value and we hold the assumption that that is a true value and we do all our modeling so in this case what we wanted to see is like we introduce the error in the rainfall because many a times like the rainfall is expected to have some sort of uncertainty uh, if that comes from the any rain gauge station or anything so here what we did is like we wanted to randomly introduce the error into that like through the probabilistic distribution and then modeling with that value modeling with the actual observed value what kind of the model response at the end and what level of uncertainty which is coming from that so that is what we wanted to see that moon i have some time okay so so in this way like the no input error that means like the framework which already i showed for the parametric and then the introducing the input error so you can see like this is a r cap so here no error means rainfall having no error this is actually the input error and this how we did this input error is like we took the absorbed rainfall value and then we applied the rainfall multiplier so this multiplier we sampled from the probability distribution and then this is kind of the errored rainfall value you can say or like the close to what is a true value which can uh, go in that so this error are also like we controlled through the calibration. So your whole model calibration wanted to map and match with the observed value, how best the error could be. So this one we just selected from the probability distribution. So here we assumed the log normal distribution because the error mostly follows the normal distribution. So here we chose the log normal because the rainfall multiplier, we wanted to have a positive value. So when we choose the uh, normal distribution, it will have a negative and uh, negative value. So which uh, we directly wanted to consider that uh, the normal distribution effect through the log normal. So that is the, the, the multiplication factor should be positive. So that is the only uh, assumption. So this is a framework like uh, we developed for quantifying the input uncertainty. So we assume the prior probability distribution, then this uh, multiplier will be sampled, then the error forced input uh, will uh, take the values in the model calibration. 
and finally we did the forecast so if the model performance is good it is fine otherwise these parameters of the pdf will be updated and then this will continue until uh, the model actually gives a satisfactorily good results or model converges so this is actually the input uncertainty you can say so this is all the probability distribution of the multiplier so which ranged from uh, 0.9 to 1.15 uh, that means like uh, suppose you have a rainfall value 100 mm so typically the value could be 90 mm to 115 mm so that is the range in which the value can range so this one gives the measured value so here you can see the bias in rainfall that is measured minus the corrected value so as you can very clearly see that the measured value when it is going high there is a high bias into that for the low values the bias is like within a very small level like 2 to uh, minus 2 mm so you can see like for 25 mm it's something like uh, minus 2 to 2 m that means like roughly around 10 percentage uncertainty we noticed in that so this one is a converged uh, uh, multiplier so this is like we uh, did two different uh, cases the case one considering the input uncertainty uh, case two case one is like without uh, considering the input uncertainty so we found like there is a difference in the statistical nature of the all these parameters like mean and standard deviation so here you can see how the uncertainty is uh, uh, developed uh, like in the Pareto front. The same uh, the previous uh, framework which I showed, which we just integrated with quantifying the uh, input uncertainty. So we found like there is a shift. The case two, if you see that, considering the input uncertainty into that, that actually elevated the overall prediction uncertainty. So then the case one, you can see like, without considering the input uncertainty so we found like there is a, a significant uh, influence when we really consider the input uncertainty into that so that actually deviated the value so for the given percentage of coverage you see like the the uh, the uh, given poc there is an increase in the average width from the case one to case two so this is like a stage one stage two same simulation we did and finally like you can see the calibration and validation so the prediction interval was less when we don't consider the input uncertainty when we consider the input uncertainty this gray color band shows the input uncertainty also considered that means like here the input uncertainty along with the parametric uncertainty was considered in this case and this was a result finally we wanted to see like how overall all this uncertainty when we quantify is impacts uh, any decision making so here what we did we integrated the ann model with the um, reservoir uh, uh, simulation and then that reservoir release further connected with the agricultural management model we use the uh, orisa model mainly that is used for uh, simulating the uh, rice uh, crop so here like we did the so this is like you can see uh, just to recall that uh, initially it started with parameter then we did a structure and finally like input uncertainty all these things together we did the total uh, prediction uncertainty so this one was uh, demonstrated with a study area chosen from the south india this is in uh, tamil nadu so from where like this is a tamaraburni main river basin so we chose the uh, so a tributary of the Tamaraparni. So that river called Hanumanadi. So this is the whole characteristics about the uh, this catchment. So this here, like uh, we had only the weekly rainfall and we just forecasted this weekly uh, runoff. Accordingly, the reservoir wa was simulated and finally, like we just uh, simulated the crop growth simulation model. So this is a, a model structure we chose and then we quantified the structure uncertainty and then uh, we did we similarly the whole framework was applied for this data set so i didn't want to repeat that so we did a different model calibration and then the prediction uncertainty was finally quantified in stage two and this is the overall uh, model uh, results in stage two so this is the main framework you can see like uh, from the ann model as i mentioned like how the decisions are influenced when you really quantify and uh, stochastically when you simulate this model so typically instead of just a single mean value you get the maximum and minimum value as well so all these things like we individually we gave and then uh, in the ga optimizer so the ga optimizer did the reservoir simulation this reservoir simulation is connected with the crop growth simulation and finally we quantified the uncertainty in the crop growth simulation how the yield actually varies from the mean value to the lower maximum value because of the decision which comes so here 
you can see like this is a reservoir inflow. So the inflow we forecasted, then the reservoir releases also uh, accordingly managed. So this is a, a schematic of the crop growth simulation model, uh, which requires like various, again, different parameters. So this model was already developed and I just used directly the calibrated model. I have not done any calibration for this model. Uh, my only aim is just to showcase like how this uh, stochastically varying the reservoir inflow simulation will have an impact in the crop growth simulation model. So this is a different uh, parameters as I mentioned it's like already calibrated from the previous uh, the researchers so directly I used that value to do that. So here is a real-time operation for the weekly uh, releases. So the ANN forecast was made for every week and then once the forecast is made, then you have the observed value. So you use the observed value. If not, then the forecast value you use. But the forecast was not very accurate. We just used just the one step ahead forecast. For the rest of the period, we use the statistical historical mean value itself. So that way, like we wanted to see how uh, this simulation is actually taking place. So as you can see, like this is the first level. So second level is like one is already the uh, crossed so then you use the actual observed value so this is a statistical mean of the inflow value from the historical period so this is just the an and inflow that means like an and forecasted inflow so like that it will just keep on it will move so this one we did for the 15 week because uh, the whole this crop uh, the rice one uh, took 15 week uh, model results it required and this is a final uncertainty quantification so we did for the operational framework and planning framework because Without this forecast also, you could really use the what is observed value of the mean and the historical uh, value for the future period. So in that way, we want we just compared these two results and we found like, uh, you can see that uh, the mean simulated here, the total uh, yield and this is the upper simulated and the lower simulated. That means like this model, whatever like uh, we chose to forecast for the inflow in the reservoir, how that affects transfer to the when you are finally taking the decision in terms of any uh, crop growth simulation it could be for the hydropower or any different applications like the decision making so here you can very clearly see like so in that way like you get a confidence just because you may be having going with only the mean value instead of the mean value here it gives uh, the whole range of the simulation so you can believe your model my model is having uh, this much limitation and maximum this could be the values so this is upper and uh, lower simulated value. So overall, uh, the just to uh, summarize the whole work, like uh, the proposed uh, framework that prediction interval method we developed was very effective in the NN model when we want to develop the confidence in the simulation. And then uh, you can choose any simulation depending on like whether you want to go with a higher percentage of the coverage or you want to just to go with a very narrow interval, depending on what level of the decision you want to take. And then uh, it will have a kind of uh, ensemble of all the model will be like more appropriate for the forecast application. And then the peak was especially modeled well because many a times the people report that the peak is not uh, well predicted. So that one was good in our model. So the input uncertainty uh, helped us to maximize the uh, better appropriate parameter value. Uh, the similar framework was already applied in conceptual model. So same thing we applied in the ANN model. And then uh, the structure and certainly we could not find much because of the parallel computing architecture, as I mentioned. And successfully, we just uh, uh, showcased uh, how this quantifying the uncertainty influences when we wanted to make a decision. Here, we use the irrigation scheduling. So finally, that irrigation scheduling, how that uh, impacted the crop growth. So this is all about uh, the presentation. Uh, thank you for patiently listening. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kashi, for the comprehensive uh, presentation on this uh, uncertainty analysis. Uh, yeah, now uh, I would like to take the questions uh, from students. And online students, uh, you can also leave the questions in the chat box uh, so that you know, I can read out. Then Kashi will answer. So any questions from student side? I know that it is uh, may not be very interesting because mostly like we chose yeah thank you thank you for your comprehensive yeah. uh, presentation 
Uh, I'm Sheila Kamiri. I'm working with uh, Regent X Creative Okay. So I have two questions. Uh, I saw the movie Elevation. So if uh, maybe I'm not sure about this. What were the input variables uh, used and how long was the duration? How many times uh, I said I mean forecast uh, trading point, number of trading points. Uh, I'd like to know that. Okay. And how can we be confident that the results are not converging at local media or local maximum? Okay. We talk about uh, functionality. Mm -hmm. uh, how can we be confident in, in case of uh, machine learning models? Okay. These converging points are not local minima or local maximum results. When I uh, uh, listen that you described that if you went up to 20% years uh, plus and then you should make yeah. Maybe if we have gone 100% yeah. or somewhere there, then, then the model might convert it somewhere else. Yeah. So that could be the universal uh, converging point. So how can we convert on that? Okay, okay. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thank you for uh, the questions. Um, so here we chose the only we have we use the rainfall and then the the previous antecedent uh, discharge value because we don't have any soil moisture data mostly in the machine learning tools we use the previous uh, discharge data as a proxy for the soil moisture data so we i can sh show the input that from the initial that model how we chose Okay, so I think it will come in this uh, simulation. Yeah. yeah, here you can see. Similarly, like we did for the previous case also. Here, just the three input. That the present day rainfall and previous day rainfall and previous day discharge. For the uh, hourly, this is the weekly forecast. So we did three levels, like hourly forecast, uh, daily forecast, and weekly forecast for the demonstrating the different uncertainty. So in all the cases, you can see like mostly we chose, we used, uh, we used the uh, the previous day rainfall or like uh, three days before rainfall and this, uh, this, uh, this, these are all the combination. So this one we arrived with the auto correlation and cross correlation, which variable is like having the high influence with the output variable. And coming to the other question we asked, like the data, the length of the data was mostly around for the hourly data. We didn't have a much data, three year data, something around three year data we use for the, uh, this one we used around 15 year data. So like that, the data length was also varying in that because as I told, like this is a pure methodological development. So we wanted to use how robust they are. And coming to your other question, like whether it is a global optimized or local optimized, well, uh, it is uh, well accepted that like uh, most of the time it gets trapped in the local optimization. But here in this case, like uh, our confidence was more because we use the genetic algorithm based optimization to optimize all these parameters. Generally, like uh, people reported that the GA is not, uh, uh, GA is good in terms of like reaching the global optimization. It doesn't get trapped in the local optimization like the uh, the traditional gradient descent method, it has a more likely chance that it gets trapped in the local optimization. That way, like uh, uh, we tried a different range, but like we found that the 10 percentage of that or 20 percentage within that range, the parameters were like more effective in terms of finally converging into the simulation. But like we did, we increased our range and like this one, we believe that this must be a global optimized solution or at least near to the global optimized solution because of the usage of GA. For, for AN and you didn't use GA, but... No, AN and no, also we used to GA. So, this one is like the whole AN and parameters were optimized by genetic algorithm based, uh, uh, GA based algorithm, the whole AN and weights. So in that way, we can believe that it is not really locally you get trapped. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, any other questions uh, from here? Okay, if not, I will uh, go to this online uh, students. Uh, online students, if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, unmute and uh, you can ask your question. So if interested, like I showed, uh, the papers which were published from these works. So yeah, you can, you can that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go you to can. my profile and yes. Yeah. yeah, you can also email him. So
so that you know yeah. we will uh, give more information so any questions from online students uh, yeah one saurav uh, no sir but there is some question in the chat box can you please check How do okay. you choose? So uh, best structure. Yeah. So the here when we say the AN and structure is like how many uh, number of layers and number of nodes we wanted to fix it. So in a way like this is also a kind of the trial and error. So initially we go with the maximum number of the hidden uh, neurons, especially that hidden layer like uh, one layer we found one layer itself is good increasing more number of layer also unnecessarily it will increase the computational burden and also model may be over uh, predicting in terms of calibration may be good but in validation it will completely fail so we use the trial and error method when we want to choose the best structure of the ANN model okay okay so oh, I, I hope i answered yeah is that clear um may we use the trial yeah, and error method yeah, yeah. too okay so any other questions from uh, online students? Yeah, if not, I will ask on our two questions. Yeah, yeah, sure. uh, so which uh, uncertainty is more uh, dangerous? You said uh, three, okay. right? Uh, input uh, model and uh, uh, data, right? Okay. In, uh, input data, model mm -hmm. and uh, structure. Yeah. So which one is? See, in, the, in this analysis, which, which is like kind of... Uh, uh, model to model, it may get varied. We cannot really say like this uncertainty is like really high. The other is very less. We cannot say that. In this case, what we observed is like uh, our uh, input and parameter uncertainty had a high influence in the structure uncertainty. And then overall, if we say that like these two are almost like equally uh, influencing the model uh, prediction, model forecast in this case. Uh, otherwise, like uh, this uh, kind of uncertainty is mostly subjective model to model. Suppose you choose any conceptual or physics based model. If you use any wrong uh, selection, if you remove completely some of the process, it may be highly bringing more uncertainty into that. Okay. Many times in the model, we may be completely assuming uh, some constant value without varying base flow. Let's say that you assume uniform base flow or just you remove some of the component like uh, snow melt component or anything in your structure you are not really capturing that if suppose the cat watershed has that effect then uh, structure uncertainty may be in that case very dangerous if you are not really uh, bringing into your system so it depends on like uh, what kind of uh, the nature of the watershed and also what kind of model uh, we'll be using that yeah okay so what is the difference between this uh, you know uh, standard uh optimization like a SWAT model we are uh, optimizing yeah. the parameters mm -hmm. right we are calibrating the model parameter and uh, this kind of uh, uh, calibration what is the difference and uh, should we include this kind of optimization uh, uh, whenever we develop the models like uh, you know the physical based models or uh, other data driven models or we can we can go with the standard uh, modules or we should include this kind of uh, you can use this kind of model but only the question here is like uh, this type of model when we go with the physics based model where you have 100 different uh, more number of parameters sometimes the number of parameter may be 100 parameter so these type of model will uh, suffer because of uh, reaching the final optimized solution because here especially in ga we use like uh, how many number of the generation what is the kind of the population we use so if the model parameters is like going very high these type of uh, model uh, algorithms may not be very good so that is where like uh, this same framework we tried with the swat model to optimize that prediction interval but we could not get a good results in the swat model because uh, swat is having its own limitation and it's, it has its own set of the parameter, which will not be able to perturb it and then uh, bringing it in this type of the algorithm. And then, uh, so it's really got failed. But like, whereas in the conceptual model, like you use the HPV model or high mod, where the number of parameters are really not more than 10 or 15, then these approaches were very effective. We found uh, a good, uh, the prediction interval uh, even in the conceptual model, but the physics-based complete physics-based model, it it failed. Yeah. Okay. 
So the data driven models, let's uh, let, let's take the ANN model. Mm. So we have some standard algorithms right? yeah. optimizing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we use that model to calibrate this ANN yes, model. Yes, yes. And uh, let, let's keep that model mm. and let's use your approach. Mm. And uh, we train the model parameters, mm. ANN model parameters mm. to predict a stream flow or other parameters. Mm. So you mean to say your model uh, is uh, giving a better clo results. closer results? Yes, yes, better with, results. Yeah. With that of uh, observed. Observed, yes, yes, yes. That That's one why we want that. to use this kind of approach uh, in calibrating the yeah. uh, ANN model. ANN model, yeah, yeah. And here the flexibility is like you can have a really control on your parameter. What parameter like the initial range especially and then finally how much is optimized converged value. All sort of the flexibility you get like when you really uh, link this GA with the ANN model. Whereas the standard algorithm, this type of flexibility may not be there, especially when you want to quantify the uncertainty. But like it can be done. We have to do like uh, some more exercise in maybe like that one should come from the computer science. Yeah. So mostly like we apply these models and use it for our purposes. So yeah, because, we didn't do that level. Yeah, but it's yeah. a good suggestion. We can see that like any standard of this also we we thought like because it may be more faster because any MATLAB inbuilt to use the ANN model it is more, very fast uh, they developed a more sophisticated algorithm so yeah it might be better yeah. yeah no because you know when we uh when we think about this uncertainty mm. uh estimation we always see like you know it is like quantifying some uh error yeah, yeah. uh from this model simulated uh things like that but you no know, i i didn't uh thought about this kind of framework also we can use yeah 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 you can use that. the model parameter exactly. so that we can uh, improve the model yes uh, much uh, better way yeah to predict the uh, outflow Out right? yeah 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 we can you can use it this framework you can apply in any model like as long as if the number of parameters are within some range like not more than let's say 20 25 parameter you can use this type of model any model which you are using you can try to see like what is the best uh, set of the perturbation you can bring it and then uh, develop this type of prediction interval. So obviously like acceptance will be more rather just to showing the deterministic uh, simulation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so any other questions? Final round. And then this framework, especially like after that, like uh, so many works uh, after like we published this work and many people uh, the, Finally, like recently one review paper also came like constructing the prediction interval. So now like people almost explored this type of models across the different uh, modeling framework. When we developed this one, it, it was kind of, uh, we in fact like uh, kind of uh, interested or like got in, uh, inspired from the works which is published from the electrical engineering. They use this type of approach for energy load forecasting. So the kind of the framework we adapted for hydrologically how it will work. Yeah, it's very interesting uh, presentation and uh, we learned many things. I hope uh, the students also learned uh, many things uh, from this uh, presentation. So if there is no further questions, uh, I would like to close this session uh, by giving this small souvenir to uh, yeah. Dr. Prakash. Thank you. Can you take one photo? Okay, move on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>